Okay, and so what's coming up is uh, something we haven't covered yet, but I wanted to uh, to talk about it a little bit. And it it comes up in, uh, in fact, Paige's homework. She did a real good job of designing one of the homework assignments. And when I look at her block diagram, we can see that there's a different color on the line. I mean, this is not this is not showstopper kind of stuff, but these are numeric values. And if you look at it, the icon indicates they're double precision, which means uh, they take up more memory room when you uh, use this for a a uh, sensor or a control. The way, if you right click on any of the icons, there's always a properties slot down at the bottom that gives you access to all the parameters that specify that particular type of control or icon. And very often, the data type is, uh, is assumed to be a certain characterization. In this case, it's a double precision fixed point configuration. Well, when she hooks it up to the uh, loop counter, the loop counter is blue because it's an integer. And so this little <clears throat> connection there shows the orange uh, arrow, whereas these other connections don't have a white colored arrow. This means that the program is converting from integer to double precision at that juncture. Now, that's in many cases, that's not bad. But if we go in and look at the properties of this particular indicator, we can make it adapt to the source. And if we adapt to the source, now it becomes an, an integer and it matches the color and there's no conversion. Now, most of the time, this is not that big of a deal. But Douglas, in your, in your uh, loop that you sent me or the homework assignment that you sent me, uh, it, it was, it did make a difference. And that's where you were seeing the errors. Let me see if I can find that. Um, and maybe I can't. The, the dead zone. I didn't actually send you the VI. I only sent you screenshots. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> Um, and, and so the point that I would make is that th the way you control it, it depends on where you start the connection. So if you start the connection, uh, for instance, here, this is going to be an integer control. If I, if I want it to be uh, an indication, make this an indicator, create an indicator, it will create a, an integer from that point. If I add a point I'm trying to make, if I add another indicator here, and I go over here and want to connect to it, depending on what, where I draw the line from controls what's, what's being converted. So if I draw it from here, it'll stay the integer. If I, come from the other side. Again, this doesn't matter. It matters on something like motor control where it can't accept an integer value. And so that's where you're getting a data, a data conflict. So we'll see that when we get into the simulator again. Any questions about that? Uh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of access to the, the, uh, ro the controls of the both controls the description of the controls and the indicators. But again, most of the time that won't be necessary to deal with it in a, uh, a robot design. Okay, so what I want to do tonight is talk more about the robot project itself and specifically set up a uh, an actuator and walk through the process how that's done in the robot project. So I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to to use the simulator. If you haven't, we'll stay, uh, stay online a little bit afterwards and make sure you 
have your questions answered. Today we're going to go into more details on each of the VIs which are part of a robot project. And then we'll learn how to set up the channels for the sensor, sensors and the actuators. Specifically, we're going to do a servo and, and be able to control it with push, put, uh, push buttons either on the joystick or on the dashboard. Everything that the discussion about the simulators is under, under the list of tutorials in chapter 10, and it goes through, uh, Leo, if you were, if you'd look at chapter 10, it would walk through how to run the simulator, or at least launch the simulator for the maze uh, robot. What we're going to talk about is uh, when we have channels assigned to sensors, we have to make sure that we've identified the type of sensor and we have the type of signal set up that the sensor either will give us or requires when it gets integrated, interrogated. I got it there on the tip of my tongue. And so some of the sensors include ultrasonic scanners, encoders. Encoder is a device that goes on a wheel or a rotating motor. And based upon the number of rotations, it can determine the speed and even by calculations, the distance traveled of a particular robot or an element on the robot. And then uh, clearly the camera can be another sensor. Actuators allow the robot to do the, the motion and engage the outside world. And these include motors, servos, uh, solenoids, and uh, and and then uh, things that are called relays or motor controls. Now, one of the one of the things that I get real sticky about when we get into the actual design is what I call, and I'll send out a, a copy of this a little bit later on. What I refer to as a robot setup worksheet, and it's it's a communication link between the wiring team and the the programming team, because where these channels are connected on the Robo Rio make a difference to how we control it from the program side. And consequently, there has to be some control over how things can change. And this is especially vital when you're moving the robot around or you have the potential for connections coming loose and you want to make sure you get them connected um, to the right place. Any input or output channel, we need to set it up the channel and begin, and then close it out and finish. And here's what it's going to look like. And so we're going to walk through this. And you guys are welcome to follow along as I do this. So we're going to start off with lab view. We're going to open up another copy of the uh, simulator. Not sure why it had a problem with me there. And I don't want to tell National Institutes about it. OK, it's, it's from this page that the tutorials are listed. And the number 10 down here is the robot simulation that's described. And the reason I want to emphasize this is that this will tell us if we go down to a description of the sensors that are on board the uh, simulator, this tells us what channels each of the sensors is connected to. And so after we walk through a, a few of the VIs, we're going to come back and end up connecting the camera servo so we can track things around the maze. OK, so we want to start a new project, an FRC RoboRio project. We want to call this 2021 Maze Camera. Or something that you can recognize. You want to put in your team number. And we want to select Learn LabVIEW 
Mackinac Maze Simulation. And then click Finish. And it goes through its uh, loading of or finding the libraries wherever they're stuck in the installation files. Is everybody able to do this, to follow through this step? Yes. Anybody not able to do it? Leo, are you trying this out? Are you with me on this one? Uh, yeah, everything's already like done loading. I have this little um, like like it says project 2021 maze camera dot IV project I that I have that. Okay, this is called the project explorer. And yes, so it, that's what I have. It's important to know how to get back to it. And so I'm going to keep it here on the side and then refer to it as I need to. And I want to expand the plus sign beside team code. And we're going to open up each one of these and see what's there and talk about it before we do make any additions. For now, we're going to skip autonomous, but we're going to open up begin.vi, double click on the icon for begin.vi, and then go to the block diagram. And this will look familiar from what we worked on Tuesday night. Again, any channel, any I.O. channel that needs to be set up, you have to set up the channel and assign a name in begin.vi. And so normally, and you'll notice on this description of the motor setup, we have an open, we have, and if you use uh, context help, this icon's called the uh, robot drive ref num registry set. So this sets, this icon sets the name. And as we, and you, I'm not going to do a motor just because They've got a funky one coming out of the library that's more difficult to explain. But let's go ahead and, and set up an additional sonar. So again, sonar is a sensor. It's a digital element with two uh, channels on the digital controls from the RoboReo. To set up a new channel, you right click to get your functions uh, palette. And then click on WPI Robotics Library and then pin it so we can come back to it in a second. And because we're looking, to, we're talking about the sensor palette, we click on sensors and you notice we have a gyro, an encoder, a potentiometer, a switch, uh, accelerometer, counters, and ultrasonic scanners. So we're going to set up another ultrasonic scanner. So click on that, and it opens up the palette with these five icons. The first thing we want to do is open. So click on open, drag it, and put it down at the bottom. Now, these, these channel assignments come from the uh, description of the simulator's channels in in the tutorials guide. And so they should align with these channels here. And so for us just to put one in there isn't, isn't gonna help, but um, this is just for illustration's sake. So first thing we do is we put in the open. Next thing we put in, click and, and place the ref num set. Now, as we go back to a context help and hover over each of these icons in the bold tab, uh, type, these are the inputs that have to be connected. If we don't have something connected to these, then there's uh, we'll get an error message. All right, so again, we want to follow the examples they, they've given us. So we're going to connect the top pipe, the top magenta colored pipe between open and set. We got to have a ping 
uh, DIO channels. Right click from the spool of wire and create a constant. And so that LabVIEW knows from the library information that it has to look at the DIO section for a ping channel, a digital channel for this type of sensor. And if we were going to duplicate, let's say, this front sonar, we'd select DIO0 for the ping, following this illustration at the top. You use a white knuckle to change it. And then on the second input, the echo DIO, right click and create a constant. And this one we would duplicate the DIO one. Now again, we don't want, I mean, the whole purpose of having a, a setup worksheet is to not duplicate the channel. So we're just doing this for illustration purposes. So now we've got the two channels. Now we need to assign a name. Now, if we only have, so the name goes on this top uh, left-hand nipple on the RefNum set. You right-click on it and create a constant. It will assign a constant uh, with the generic terms for the sensor. And you'll notice that they put in a description to indicate which sonar they're looking at. If we just have one sensor of this type, you can fly with what the default is, but it's important to know if you have multiple ones, which one is which. Okay, so at this point, we've set this channel up. I'm going to come back and erase it before we get any further, but I just want to, the whole point is they give us an example of how to set things up. And it's a matter of just going to the library and pulling up the shape or the uh, icon that matches the things that they show us in the example. Now, when we get to a physical robot, you'll find, if I go back to view, getting started page, getting started window, there's also the ability to have under the utility tab, nope, I take that back. Under the support tab, there's installed FRC examples. And once I click on that, it brings up a list of examples that are already built into the installation. And it fell to the backhand page. There it is. A little example finder, where'd it go? There it is. And so it's it you can it's down on your uh, menu bar, your task bar with this little magnifying glass, and so there's a folder for each general type of sensor, and we're looking at the uh, we open up the sensor tab, we are looking at the ultrasonic, and if I double click this to open it up, this is a ready-made VI that we can run on a prototype board without having to use the uh, robot project. And where this is significant is the VI will show us exactly how to set up that particular sensor. So long before the robot is built, programmers should be going through these examples and on your uh, prototype board, try to set up each one and figure out how to control it. <clears throat> so here's here's the example for a sonar scanner. Again, the open is outside of the while loop because you only do it once. You don't have to assign a name because you don't have multiple channels. And consequently, you're, you're kind of skipping that stage. But the next stage in using the sonar is to get the range and then this little example allows you to walk through the operation of a single scanner. So the point is they give us an example of how to do it. And then once we've figured it out on a standalone basis, we're going to, we'll talk about how to incorporate it back into the, uh, the robot project. Everybody get that? It's kind of discombobulated the way I talked it through. 
but there's an example for virtually every part that uh, can go in a robot. <clears throat> okay, so now I've got the channel set up. Before I close this out, I'm going to minimize my examples. Now, this is where you want to keep track of your robot project. Up under Window, Show Project, it'll bring up my Project Explorer. The next thing I want to do is open up the Finish BI. And I usually like to leave my Begin open so I make sure I don't have any typos. For every channel that I open up and begin, I need to close it and finish. So in this case, we're going to close this channel here. And I follow the example that they show, which is use this icon, which is a get registry. So I go back to my library for sensors. Go back to the ultrasonic scanner, pick up the get, put it there, pick up the close. Again, I'm following the example that they give on the basic project. Connect that, right click, create a constant, and then uh, customize it if I'm using something other than the default name. So every project, every channel that we open and begin, we want to make sure we close it and finish. Any questions about that? We're going to go, when I get through talking through the project, we're going to go back and set up a, uh, a servo. How come the other sonars that were already there in the beginning aren't being closed here? I can't explain that. It doesn't make sense. It could in. It, well, wait, for starters, we don't have a real project, so it's being simulated. Uh, but I know for a fact that you can have floating code that will get in your way in a physical robot. So I can't explain why they didn't follow their own rules and regulations. So I'm going to delete this, delete this, control B to get back to my finish that was unpopulated. And I'm going to take out this additional scanner that we put in there. Any questions about begin and finish? Okay, again, the more you use this, the better, and that's the purpose of playing with the examples. The more you practice with it, the more you learn the uh, the quirks of each of the individual devices, because there's a data sheet on everything. So I'm going to close begin. I'm going to go back to my Project Explorer, and I want to talk about um, there's two. Let's go ahead and talk about teleop because we saw that last week. Teleop is, is part of every project, and it shows the connections for the joystick and the drive motors, and then a couple other, again, dashboard controls just to show how to pick them up and read them when you want to use them for input. Now, when we get to it, don't be surprised when I don't use teleop at all. And I'll explain why here in a second. But many people, many people stick with the way this is set up. And the difference is if we have a tank drive, we would come in and replace that uh, icon with a tank drive icon. And we're off and running. Okay, so why? There we go. Um, so anyway, that's just to reiterate, this icon is called index and array. And the thicker lines, for instance, this orange line is thicker than this orange line, 
that's because this is a pipe and this is a single data line. This is a pipe that includes um, multiple numeric values that are arranged in an array. And so I need to un I need to sequence them with this icon first, and then based upon what index I put over here, it starts pe peeling them off on this side. And you'll notice we can make this as long as the uh, element is the array coming out of that particular joystick. So some of them can be very long, and we'll we'll talk more about that as we get into joysticks. There's also the same thing for buttons. They've indexed just a single button here. Um, and these are arranged as we saw on the di the driver station for button zero and button one, and we'll be using that again tonight. All right, so that's teleop, and it's only active when we're in the teleop portion of the game. Now, there's three special. Um, VIs. We've already talked about robot main, and again, its primary purpose is to launch the overall project because it's a supervisor VI, but it also gives us a clue as to how the game state machine is managed, which is right here. Based upon what state is coming from the control system, the uh, robot will either be an autonomous enabled, teleop enabled, autonomous disabled, disconnected, or finish. And it just shows by default. Well, you can change it and see what's going on where. Now, the point that I would make, and the reason I don't use teleop in most of my robot projects, is that it's in a while loop that doesn't have a time element in it. And the reason there's no time element is they don't care how frequently this runs because usually there's a lot of logic. And at the very least, this VI, the, uh, the teleop VI, can end up with a lot of, lot of logic in it that could sort things down. Um, but consequently, it's not a deterministic. I can't count on this, this always calling teleop in the same time frame every uh, loop. So we'll, and I'll get into explaining this later on. What I use is this thing called time tasks. And so we're going to open that up. And it, here's a legacy thing. It's called time task in the uh, robot main. But when you get into team code, it's called periodic task. But they're one and the same. Now here is where your time elements all come into play. They already have pre-drawn for us a 10 millisecond loop, a 100 millisecond loop. And very often, you'll put in additional loops running at whatever speed you want. And these are available for activity in all phases of the game, including teleop, autonomous, um, and test. And so this is where I put the code for driving because I can switch the drive system between autonomous and uh, and teleop. We'll get into more of that in a couple three classes. Okay. Now the special so a robot main is one of the special VIs. Another special VI is robot global data. I put every signal I can through robot global data. It's special because it doesn't have a block diagram, right? It's quite literally just a display. And I think of it in terms of like a mail system, uh, well, an address system. Any, any variable that I either utilize or calculate, I put an indicator on robot global data because then I can use that value by putting robot global data in whichever VI I need to use that particular signal. So I think it's extremely valuable. At the very least, it can be used for debugging 
because when nothing's working, I can display those elements from robot global data and, and tell at a glance uh, what's working, what's not working, what part of the system is not working. So we'll get into more of that here in a second. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, what we're going to do is add the servo for the maze camera and uh, and then control it with some with some buttons. So to do that, we need to start with the begin.vi. So I'm going to open up begin.vi and look at the block diagram. I'm going to right click, open up the WPI Robotics Library and pin it. I'm going to, it's, so a servo is an actuator. So I want to open the actuator uh, tablets and then find the servo. And just like before, first thing we do is open. So I'm going to put it over here in line. And then the ref num set, click it once and put it in line. And that's all I need for right now. Now, if I hover over this, it shows me the highlighted elements that need to be connected up on my context help. So I need to connect the top pipe. I need to uh, determine the PWM channel on the left hand side, the top nipple, right click, create a constant. Now, if we look at the tutorial description of available channels, we see the camera servo is PWM channel 5, and it has an angular range of 170 degrees. So it's got what I just did, I did by accident. If I come back over here, I want to find my PWM channel, right click, and create a constant. And it gives me the choices of PWM channels. Here, I use the white knuckle and select PWM5. I need, I notice here a, a pipe called the ref num name. I right click on it and create a constant. Now, again, we're only going to have one servo at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and stay with the, uh, the default value. All right, at this time I'm through, I've done exactly what's been done here on other channels. So now I'm gonna go back and open up Finish. So I'm gonna slide it over so I can see my Project Explorer. Open up Finish, show the block diagram. All right, if I follow the example, the first thing I do is get ref num name, which is ref num name get on the servo pal palette. Click it once, put it here, and then click on servo close. Connect the magenta pipe between the two. And because I'm only using one, uh, the name I'm going to use is default. So I right click and create a constant. Now, the reason I leave these both open is if I make it a special name like my servo or Jim servo or servo six, I double click and then copy that exact name. Make sure you have space and capitalization because if you don't match the names, it's, it'll give you an error <clears throat> because this is, this is what connects the uh, robot to the ports on the robo reel. Everybody get the, set up and begin and the closing and finish correct or done any questions about it so i'm going to close my window i'm going to close finish and save i'm going to close begin and save make sure no no other changes all we've added now is a, is the servo Okay, now where do you think I'm going to put the servo controls? Just take a wild guess. You're right, periodic task. Everything that I do is in periodic task. So, so we could put it in teleop if we wanted, right? No. 
if you want to use it in autonomous, it won't be available if it's in teleop. So the answer is, yeah, you can put it anywhere you want. Whether it works or not is another story. So it's one of those lessons you can learn the hard way. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to set up another. Here's another thing. If you put too much logic in a in a loop that keeps it from running at the speed that you're kind of asking, you'll get an error as well. So that's why I ended up using half a dozen different loops at different speeds based upon the type of sensor I'm using. So I'm going to put a while loop down here at the bottom. And let's kind of make it big enough that we can do a bunch of stuff. Now you notice in their while loop, they have a constant F. So I'm going to do the same thing. Right click on the little nipple, right click and create a constant and it sets up faults. This means this won't stop. This will continue to run as long as the project is open. Now I'm going to put my uh, servo up here at the top. So again, I have to go back to the servo palette. Sensors, nope, it's an actuator. Actuators, servo. Now here we get the reference name, put it outside the loop, and then set the angle. We're going to be controlling it, the uh, servo itself. And so that's all I need to do. We have the ability to set an angle or set position. I'm going to control the angle. We're going to connect up the servo to the And then on the channel name, the ref num name, right click and create a constant. It uses that default that we agreed to use. Now, I want to use an increment stage. And this is one that we've done in our examples. First thing for an increment stage is a plus addition uh, icon. On the top, input for the addition, I'm going to right click and create a constant. And I'm going to pull that baby outside and create the tunnel. Now I'm going to put a shift register. I want to replace this tunnel with a shift register. So hover over it, right click, replace with the shift register. And now that becomes my loop going, going out. Now, whatever this number is, that's going to drive my servo. So I'm going to connect up the angle. Everybody with me so far? Anybody behind? I can slow down if that's necessary. OK, now if you recall, the thing that changes the direction is the select uh, icon. And we're going to use two buttons, one to be able to control forward counting up and counting down. So from my comparison tablet, my comparison palette rather, I'm going to pick out a select and put it there. And I'm going to hold, off, hold down control and do another one. Now, let's go back. Yeah, let's, let's just get kind of funky with this. Right now, I want to go by to my, I want to run a control through robot global data. So if I go to my project, click on robot Do uh, global data, I know I want to control with two buttons. So I'm going to put up here on the right hand corner, right click, Boolean indicators. And I like to use square ones indicating that they're going to be controlling. And so I'm going to call this first one the A button or button A. And then I'm going to put a second one in there and call it button B. And this is in robot global data.
I'm also going to use, uh, I also want to keep track of the servo angle. So I'm going to put a numeric indicator. I'm going to label it, serv label it servo angle. Everybody with me? Okay, this, this part's important. Now I'm going to close Robot Global Data and save it. Once I save it, it's included now those, ver those indicators. Now watch this part. I'm looking at my Robot Project Explorer. I'm going to left click and drag Robot Global Data into my loop. All right, now I want, first of all, I want to change this, right click and change it to read, which moves the nipple to the right hand side. I want button A to control this first select. So I'm going to position it there, white knuckle, button A. It's a Boolean, and my input to the center of the select is a Boolean. So let's kind of make some room. Same thing down here. I'm going to hold down control, little arrow, left click and drag, robot global data, change this to button B, hook it to the center of the select. Okay, you remember we daisy chain, so I'm going to take the output of this one to the bottom of the top one, the output of this to the input to the addition stage. When neither button is true, I want the uh, servo to not scan. So I'm going to create a constant of zero on the bottom input. So when neither button is, is true, it takes the signal up and does nothing with it every time the loop goes through. On the top of button B, the select, I'm going to create a constant and make it a negative one. So it'll decrement the angle on the top of the select for button A. I'm going to use a positive one. Uh, now, just because I want to be able to track this, I'm going to pull in another copy. It doesn't matter whether I use one of these or I pull in another copy of Robot Global Data. Left click and pull in Robot Global Data. Use the knuckle to select servo angle, and then I can connect it there. So now I can monitor the conditions of my buttons and my servo angle from the robot global data. Now, the question is, any, any questions about what we've done so far? Yes, I don't have a white, uh, wait system, a wait time. So I want this to uh, increment every 50 milliseconds. So create a constant, make it 50, and we're good to go. Now, the question is, how do we get the signals for button A and button B into robot global data? That, because that's they're already in uh, teleop, that's where we're going to pick it up. So now if we go to teleop, block diagram, you remember the buttons were right here. This green pipe is the button output from my, if I look at my context help up on the right, the green line coming out is buttons and it's an array. So if I index the array, the first one will be button zero and the second one will be button one. So, okay, watch this. Now I've I expanded my index. So now I've got the first two buttons coming off the joystick. I'm going to pull in robot global data. Select button A and connect it to the first one. Hold down control. 
little arrow, drag the second one down, make this B. Okay, now those of you with a joystick, we're using the joystick. Those of you that don't have a joystick, you can do exactly the same thing with the dashboard buttons like we did uh, Tuesday night. And just connect button A. And if you want to get fancy, you can use an OR and take either OR of these. Um, how many people don't have a joystick? How many people do we need to talk about this? Anybody? Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, so right now we have our joystick buttons connected to the robot global data. I'm going to, this is my teleop, so I'm going to close it and save it. I'm going to close my periodic task and save it. Let's do it a once over. I've got an increment stage, increments at zero, starting at zero. My buttons, 50 milliseconds, servo looks good. Okay, now we're going to go open up robot main. And if I haven't saved it, there'd be a little asterisk up here at the top. So, well, so far I've saved everything. If there is an asterisk, go into file, save all, and it'll do the same thing. Okay, now I'm ready to run the robot main with the little run arrow on the top left corner. Here comes our simulator. Okay, if we turn on the uh, zoom and follow it in or dial it in, slide it in, this little white thing sticking up is a simulated camera. And so the servo is mounted to the, the bottom of that little post or to the top of the post. I need to open up my driver station. If I get too far ahead or you guys lose me, say something. Now, again, right now I don't want to I don't want to mess with the joystick. I just want to play with the uh, with the buttons. And you'll notice as I exercise the buttons on my joystick. They indicate both down on the bottom on the driver station, there's zero and there's one. So there's there's the two buttons I'm expecting to use. And they're also indicating up on my on my dashboard. Now I I did that without knowing where where the physical button was. And so after you play with it a while, you may want to pick one over the other. But I'm ready to go back to the uh, operations tab. I'm going to do it in teleop because I don't want the thing running on, away on me. I'm going to click enable. Now I expect to see my little camera turn when I push the buttons. Applause, please. Yay. <laughs> Everybody get it to work. Take your time. Now, what, um, what I want I to go ahead. Um, I haven't been able to get robot main to run. Uh, it says there's a bunch of errors and a bunch of different VIs. Um, I don't really know why. Okay, well, we'll have to look at it in a second. I want to show something here on my robot global uh, data. So go back to my robot project, open up robot global data. Now, this is what I was talking about. This this is a huge advantage running the signals through robot global data. There's no time penalty. Uh, but here's my two buttons. You can see the buttons are working. You can see the servo angle changing. So who was that that was just talking? Who's having trouble with robot main? Um, Hale. Okay, hang in there. Let's see if anybody else is getting it to work.
Anybody else having success? Anybody else having problems? Okay, and how are we doing on time? Before we before we go, I'll show you how to turn the camera on and uh, verify it. Now, there's there's two things I wanted to. So I didn't hear anybody say they were good at it going, or anybody say they didn't have it going except for Hale. Anybody else want to jump? Right. We got it working, but then after a while it stopped, and the camera won't turn anymore. Okay, why do you think that is? Anybody else having that problem? Let me let me give you a clue. You remember the data sheet? Every element has a data sheet. And for this one, it's right here as far as the angular range of the servo. It only it only works from zero to 170 degrees. So when you when you give it a number greater than 170, it doesn't know what to do with it until you come around 360 degrees from it. And the reason for being snotty like that is that that's why I did the example about nested loops where you can put limits. And so in reality, in fact, Charles, you did that. You did a plus 69 to negative 69. What you need to do is put limits on your, that's kind of your control of 0 and 170, and you'll have um complete control over the camera anybody know what i'm talking about right here you want to put nested two nested loops and you when it reaches 170 you want it to stop when it goes uh below one you want it to stop so i'm going to close mine out I'm going to leave that as an exercise for uh, follow up because we've done the example and Charles you did a good job of it but you need to use nested loops then in this control sig signal to keep it from exceeding 170 on the plus side and 0 on the bottom side anybody else get work and have problems so Hale you want to show me your screen <laughs> Uh, sure. Um, I'm going to turn mine off. Um, just finding the right thing. All right. Um, so I see a... Um, okay, so you, you've got a, a grade arrow, so you can't run. If you click on it, mm -hmm. it tells you where the examples are, right? Uh, yeah, can you can you see that error list or is it not? No, it's not showing me the error list. Oh, um, hold on, let me try something. Well, go to it. Just click on go to the error, and it'll open up the VI. Here, hold on. I think it might only work if I share my entire screen. Uh -huh. Okay, let's go to periodic task. Oh, well, see, it has you got stuff going on to begin. That's a problem too. So yeah. open up whichever might... one you want. Mm. All right, so um, periodic task begin. again. Okay, oh, here's begin. Okay, look at the block diagram. Um. Okay, so click on the run arrow. Um, are you sure you're in the right? Okay, let's go back to the Close the box so I can see your one line. And then open up the screen so I can see the whole good match. Uh, whole, whole block diagram of um, begin or? A begin, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, I 
Now push, click on the black arrow again. You didn't change any of the uh, sonars? I don't think so. so oh, safety. Oh, just everybody, uh, we talked about the watchdog timer on the drive motor setup. You'll notice on the very end of that chain of icons over on the left, Hale. There's a, I, yeah, right there it says safety configuration. That's the watchdog timer. And, okay. and it's, it's by default on every actuator we have. And if you don't uh, renew or update that drive signal in every 100 milliseconds, it'll stop. Okay, so mm -hmm. did you put in the, uh, when you were, well, I was talking about adding a scanner, a sonar scanner, did you put one in? Um, I have this uh, this servo. I might have. That's the only thing you've added. Yeah. Did I? Um, oh, was I, I think I might have accidentally closed that and not saved it. Possibly that was a thing earlier, right? No, it's we, saved um, now. Hmm? You know, the thing to do is to is to just um, well, let's okay, let's go to periodic task and see what you have there. Scroll up. Now it looks okay. Um, now, so, you know, push before you this year mm -hmm. for periodic task. What? Let's go to finish. What do you have in finish? Oh, okay. Um. Somehow or another, it's, it's not picking up. I think you need to start from scratch and do it again. Because okay. that's rather than trying to fix something when it's this kind of crooked. So you've done something accidentally and it it's telling you everything is fouled up and you're not sure where to go. I'd start from scratch and do the whole thing over again. Okay, I think I might also check if it's a uh, if it can run before any edits. Um, yeah, that's cause a good I, way too. Yeah, because I think there might be some problems with stuff not being downloaded or something. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else have issues? Okay, so that's. That was the extent of the class for tonight. I'll send out a copy of I'll send out a copy of the video, and I'll send out a PDF file that explains how to send a project. If you zip up a project, it doesn't do any good to send the individual VIs, but if you zip it up and send me whatever it is you're having a problem with, I can unzip it and re recreate the issues of my end. So uh, I'll send out the notes on how to do that. And we can pick up everything else on Thursday, on the next Tuesday. So what we've done is we've added a camera. Uh, let me just show you real quick how to en enable the camera for those of you that got it working. And this is described in the uh, in the tutorial. But if you go to Robot Main Block Diagram. It shows two little VIs right here that are disabled. If you right click on them on the corner or the edge and remove diagram disable structure, it will put the, uh, allow the camera to send images to the PC. And so once you do that and run it, and if you have network connection on your 
dashboard, you should be able to pick out a camera. And when you do that, we'll see what the camera sees. So when I enable my actuators, I can rotate the camera and the video changes. How's that for everybody? Okay, so the, the task is to play with the robot simulator for maze and see if you can get your camera working. And, uh, and if you got any questions, send me the whole, zip the whole project up, send it to me and we'll try to sort it out with you. That's all I got. If anybody, so Leo, you're having problems with yours, with your uh, maze, launching the maze. Uh, no, not anymore. It's it's working. Yes. Hey, hey, all right. Okay. Any other questions? Well, I I have a question uh, that others may be interested in, but I don't know how long it'll take to answer. I noticed that your simulated robot does the same thing that mine does is that it slowly creeps forward even though you're not touching the joysticks right and so i'd like to program in a dead zone is that and you, you saw how i tried to do it and i wasn't successful is that something you can answer real quick yeah i sent you a, a copy of what i would do but yes oh you sent me a copy of it oh okay i, I guess i haven't checked but my email yet. now so the difference is friction right in a real robot it, it's possible to have it but you can also, because we're just looking at a plus and minus, you can kind of scale it so it's not that much. To answer your question, yes, you can do it. And so let me kind of go to my teleop, and I'll show you how I would do it. So the problem is we have um, signals coming out of the joystick that don't stay at zero. And so the request is, if I hold down control and position my mouse and left click and drag, it puts some space in my uh, I do dad. So what I'm going to do is set up a select. I did it. it the thing I sent you was actually a, a loop a case structure, but I'm going to do a same thing with the select. So what I want to do is say, okay, when this is not zero, when it's when the absolute value is less than ten, or less than point one, I want to do something different. And what that is, is take zero in I don't know if you're getting what I'm trying to do, but I want this to be So what I'm saying is if the absolute value of the joystick is within a band from 0 0.01 to negative 0 0.01, I want the output to be zero. So I'm going to control this with that, control this with that, take the value when it's outside that range and deliver it to the, the motor and make it zero if it's inside the range. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's much easier than what I was trying to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it works pretty well. At least, let's do the other one at the same time. See if it works. Because I just did the X. Let's 
So I'm going to take my absolute value. See if it's less than point one. And then take it to the select. Make it zero if it's not. And hook it to my na native output if it is. Let's see if it works. So the puppy looks like it's sitting still. Yeah, it's not creeping anymore. Oops. Maybe a little. But it's not moving either. So. Yeah. But we can play with it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for showing me that. Yeah, and my sense is you're thinking like a programmer and not like a, a word, not like an engineer. You just define the problem as a word problem, and it it naturally falls out as something that's more executable in lab view. Uh, at any rate, no other questions. We're done for the today, and uh, look for the email coming out first thing in the morning. Okay, thanks very much. Sure.